We are back in the Classic Motorsports Workshop. Uh, as you can see, this is the front suspension. What you might not see is that this is from our Bug Eye Sprite. So while all British cars, and for that matter, Alphas and Miatas and others, have roughly the same type of front suspension, the Sprite is a little different in that while it has a lower A-arm, it has no upper A-arm. This lever arm shock actually mounts to the body and that acts as your upper arm. So that makes this a little unique and quite frankly kind of goofy. But uh, these cars won SCCA National Championship after, one after another with essentially this same suspension. So if it's good enough to win at the runoffs, it's probably good enough to go get groceries in. As you can see, this has all been restored and modified some, and we'll get into that. But uh, I wanted to show you the finished suspension, and then we'll assemble the other side of the car together a little later in this video. So as we mentioned earlier in our video series, we've, we've had these A-arms uh, media blasted by the Blastmasters and then powder coated. Uh, we went ahead and got the springs powder coated. You could argue whether that's the right way to do that, but uh, you know, especially on a street car, it looks nice and it stays looking nice, which is key. So uh, for modifications, we've used the urethane lower A-arm bushing. Uh, the upper A-arm bushings are offset. These are the, from the winner's circle. Uh, the restoration parts all came from Moss Motors and our hop-up parts uh, came from the winner's circle. So this has got an offset upper A-arm bushing which will move the top of the suspension in a little bit which will give you a little bit more negative camber which makes a car handle better. It also incre increases tire wear a little bit but there's this happy balance in the one to one and a half degree range that makes a car really handle nice and it doesn't really have excessive tire wear. Another way you can add more negative camber to these cars is to shim the shock mount. If you raise this lever shock up a little bit, if you think about it, if you raise this up, it's going to pull that in a little bit, which again would increase the negative camber. So what you're looking for in a, let's say, a hot street car is about a degree, degree and a half of negative camber. Any more than that, and it will be undrivable in a straight line, and you'll wear the tires out in just a few thousand miles. But by putting a little bit of negative camber in, it sets the tire more squarely on the road when you come into a corner, and it greatly improves the handling of any car. So this Sprite has disc brakes. Uh, disc brakes were not available on a Bug Eye Sprite. They had drum brakes. These are just stock brakes from a later model. Actually, these are from a, a, a 73 Midget. So if you swap the whole assembly, which means the caliper, the rotor, the upright, the trunnions, and, and the hub, you can take any later MG Midget or Sprite after about 1962 and put these on a bug eye sprite. So the only thing we've done to these brakes, and we've done a video on how to rebuild these calipers, is uh, we've added these Goodrich stainless uh, steel lines. Uh, although they look like a stock rubber line, they, they are a braided steel line underneath. Uh, we got these, they're available now at Moss Motors. We love these braided lines. They're, they're less likely to get injured should they rub against something, and they do improve the pedal feel. Uh, it's a common misnomer that they make your brakes better. They only make the feel better, but they don't change your braking distances. The other thing we've done is use a Porterfield R4S brake pad. That is a street slash autocross pad, and that will make a great difference in your stopping distances. Another quick and easy trick we used was to lower the spring perch. So this is the spring perch that this perch sits on and this is the A-arm. So if you put this directly on here, that's the way it normally would be, but the kit lowers it about a quarter of an inch, which drops your spring perch. You can see that would drop your spring perch. Uh, what that does is lowers the car about a half an inch. So not a drastic modification, won't really change your suspension settings greatly, but you know, it gives you a little bit more of a performance look on your Sprite. The other thing we've done is switched from this truly archaic uh, ball bearing type system that an original Sprite hub uses to this tapered roller bearing, which is a much more modern uh, system, which certainly would uh, increase bearing life and also reduce the play back and forth and make it a little easier to set these cars up. 
So these are the stock springs from this car. They're, these are rated at about 271 pounds per inch. We checked the, the measurements and went to a spring calculator to make sure of it. Um, you could, if you're building a modified Sprite, you could go up to about a 340 pound front spring, which we may do in the future, but uh, a lot of times, especially on a lightweight car, it's real easy to get the thing riding so hard that you don't want to drive it. So we're going to start here and feel it out and uh, make modifications from there. All right, now that we've walked you through what the front suspension looks like and what we've done to modify it, I'm going to set this aside and we'll see if we can put, get the other side put together. All right, this is what an entire front corner of a bug eye sprite looks like when spread out on a bench. A, a little bit intimidating. Uh, one little trick we use is, is uh, Moss, and I'm sure this is available other places too, but on their website, has these technical drawings of, of a blown up front suspension. So that's a really good way to order parts to figure out what you need. Um, you can look at this and, and see that where it goes and stuff uh, on the trunnion. But um, it's a great little cheat, cheat sheet. Uh, and one other thing, uh, a Sprite, an early Sprite did not have an anti-roll bar. We are going to add an anti-roll bar to this car. It's going to be a three-quarter inch bar. We've gotten it from the winter circle, but we're going to wait uh, till we get the suspension in the car to make sure we get the mounts all correct and nothing binding and mount the sway bar then. Another idea is to have a notepad, uh, take a few notes. Uh, there's an order that this trunnion needs to be rebuilt in. And I know this because I did it wrong about five times before I figured it out. So hopefully things go a little smoother here on the second side. But uh, you definitely want to make, be able to make some notes. Um, and we also, uh, this is called Vibratype. It's a Loctite type product to, uh, you know, stuff like brake calipers. You, have, you might want to lock those down a little bit. Uh, red is for a permanent bond and a blue is for something that's fairly easily removable. So not a bad tool to have uh, as you're rebuilding suspension. So I'm gonna get a few of these bigger items out of the way to give me some room since they go last. We can start with these A-arms since it's fairly simple. These are the urethane bushings that we got from Moss. So until we, we, till we mount the suspension, we're just putting these on to get them out of the way. We can uh, mount the spring perch in with this lowering kit. The kit is made by a company called ARB Classic Engineering out of England, but as I said earlier, we've gotten it from Moss. It comes with both a uh, standard washer as well as these lock washers, which I don't understand. You wouldn't want to use both. All right, with everything in place, you can tighten them up. Yeah, we'll go back and torque everything to spec, but we're trying to get through this and keep this video under an hour. Okay, so we've got this kit installed. Here you can clearly see how we've lowered the spring perch. Another thing we should mention that I forgot when we were going through the analysis of the suspension is this is a hardened axle. Uh, this is not what a Sprite came with. But this is a very good idea if you're doing anything but a car show. And you can tell one of these, you can tell one of these modified axles because it's got welds back here, whereas on a stock sprite it's just pressed in. So a sprite uses a kingpin system, which is very antiquated. But to give you a rough idea what that looks like, it has this rod, the, the actual upright. You're going to want to grease this, uh, which we'll do here momentarily. It's got these odd little tubes that are act like kind of like a toilet paper holder. And you put it in one side and then press it in. And then your, uh, your upright goes through there. You want to get your kingpin back into your spindle before you start messing with the hub and the rotor and the, and the dust shield because it only goes together one way, or at least I only could make it go together one way. This does have a grease fittings, will do, but it's just, it's easier on the brass bushing that goes between the kingpin and the spindle housing if you grease this up a little bit. That slides into that. This has got our thrust uh, bearing in and greased. 
So that'll go like that. And we'll look for a washer and a uh, right size washer. And uh, we'll put a castle nut on this. So you want to get this tight, but not so tight that it doesn't move. So we've got our kingpin put together. We'll grease this later. There's two grease fittings on here. And we can start putting our hub together. If you're going to run a dust shield, you don't have to. Race cars don't run them, but it's a good idea for a street car just to keep stuff out of there. Um, now's the time to put your shield on. I, I put a little thread locker on this. It's not essential, but it's... Uh, if you've ever had a rattling dust shield on a rally or a tour, you, you would uh, remember this moment in this video. All right, our next step is we need to put the races into the hub. That's a bearing race from a tapered bearing, and it needs to be pressed into here. It's not hard, but it's just what needs to happen next. Uh, this is a tool designed to do this. Uh, Harbor Freight has these. They're not expensive. Uh, you want to be gentle, and you do not, mainly you do not want to score the race. As soon as you score or nick or hurt the race, well, you're buying a new set of bearings. All right, you can see that is pressed in. It is against this surface. That's how you know it's all the way down. And if you tap it and you hear kind of a thunk thunk, that means you've got it. This isn't something you normally would have to do, but we're using these bigger wheel studs. So we will need to press these in. So we're going to put a little Loctite on these studs. A little red Loctite, never hurt anything. That's because you don't want these to come back out. If you're not going to use a press, at least double hammer it so you don't damage it. Alright, so the way this tapered bearing kit works, you obviously would use your seal, but they ask you to fit it dry the first time, so there's no sense getting your sleeve or your seal involved. So they give you this little retainer which keeps your spacer up off of the bearing. You need everything to be able to spin freely. They asked you to taper the other end of this. Some of them need it, some of them don't, but we just went ahead and did it. And then here's your upper bearing. They also supply you with all these shims. And they ask you to put about 46 pounds of torque down on this nut, and then if it still spins, you want a, a, a hub to spin not freely, but with a minimal amount of resistance. You're, uh, you certainly don't want it moving back and forth, and that's what they're trying to eliminate is that problem. So we will uh, do this per their ins We'll try this first with no... We'll try this first with no spacers and see where we end up. Let me see what's this. So on the other side, it was a little tighter than this. So I used one spacer, but I think on this side, we're in pretty good shape. That's about what you want it to do. It should not sit there and spin. Remember, we've got no grease in this thing yet either. So yeah, so now what we'll do is we'll take it back apart. We'll grease everything up and assemble it, knowing that we don't really need a shim on this side. All right. This time we want to. Uh, this time we want to uh, fill everything with grease. I'm going to wash my hands quick because you don't want to get any dirt inside a wheel bearing. One thing you need to remember to do is you have to put the rotor on before you put this together. And again, I'm going to use a little Loctite here. Yeah. All right. So this kit comes with this Exxon Mobil uh, Polyrex. Uh, it, it should be fine, especially for street use. And you want to force the grease. You kind of cup your hand and force the grease into the bear. Come back around and do it the other side. And you want the grease out of the middle. You can do that. All right. So we can put 
a little bit of this grease in this seal that's not hurting us because you got to kind of go back and forth between greasy and not greasy here for a minute so kind of cup your hand and work the bearing around and press the grease into the bearing i think I, my dad taught me how to do this when i was probably about 10 years old so i've done a couple all right so we have this prepped we need to now get our spindle back into the vise. Let me set this down. You got to keep this clean, obviously, at this point. All right. So you got to get your order correct. We're going to bring the uh, we're going to bring this wheel bearing back up. Retaining washer here and our nut. All right. The most important part of all this is obviously to get this cotter pin in. Once you get this together. And then we can put our cap on and we're done with this stage of things. Okay, we're back at our bench. We can put our steering arm on and we can start putting our lower trunnion on and we'll have this thing about finished up. So the steering arm also, I put a little red Loctite on it, but the steering arm also has this little lock tab on it. So we'll, we'll use that. So I usually take one of my chisels and I will uh, make it blunt on one end. It works real good for this kind of stuff. Uh, next we'll mount the A-arm and we'll put the caliper on and that's about it. So, so here's how this goes together. It's got this brass piece that goes through here. It's threaded. And then this is something that's easy to forget, especially when taking one of these apart. It has this little dowel that holds this in place so it can't move. And then it's got this cap that goes on and it's also a grease cap. When in doubt, grease something up. Even though it does have a, uh, it does have a uh, grease fitting, we'll grease it more afterwards. So this needs to go in far enough that you can get this cap on, and you also have to line it up that you can get this pin back in. All right, so that's pretty much bottomed out. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a light to look into this to see if it's where it wants to be. You don't want to hit anything directly with a hammer. It's always better, let me line that up a little bit more. Uh, let me check All right, our next step is we can mount our caliper. Some sprites did have a retainer for here. I don't have them, so on this this one so we're going to just put a little red lock tight on the caliper mounts which should be fine all right the next thing we need to do is put this little grease cap on here i'm going to put just a little bit of blue lock tight on this one because it is a, a service item but you don't want it falling off all right that leaves us with our shock and our spring obviously the spring can't really be put in until after you get your suspension in the car we can mount this. The shock has a retaining bolt in it. We'll pull that out for now. These shocks, by the way, were rebuilt by Apple Hydraulics. They're a heavy-duty build, so they've got a little different valving and a little, little better fluid in them. So we've got our, our offset bushings positioned correctly. All right, the last thing we need to do is, is actually mount the shock. So you want to line this bolt up so that you can get into the groove with your bolt into the shock. But this needs to come in a little bit. That looks to be pretty good. All right, after a little bit of trial and tribulation, we have another corner done on our bug eye sprite. And hopefully you've uh, learned a little bit. We certainly have learned a little bit. And uh, if you like this sort of stuff, please go to our website, classicmotorsports.com, and subscribe to our channel because we're going to have a whole series of videos like this one on this car as well as tons of other project cars down the road. Support brands that support classic motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.